All right, still on the topic of the effects and implications of the border's closure. Uh, I was asking, I was going to ask Philip Obwesi in our Lagos studio uh, concerning the fact that um, there is a subsisting West African trade protocol. I uh, recall that um, in Japan, the president met with his Beninoa counterpart and they talked a bit about this uh, border closure. But since there is a subsisting uh, West African trade protocol agreement that allows uh, for mutually open borders uh, for countries in the ECOWAS region, would you say this is an economic and um, it could cause a reputational risk for Nigeria? Well, uh, if, uh, I think uh, I don't see that happening because uh, to some extent I will want to agree with Mr. Kina in Port Harcourt, but with a caveat. Uh, if Nigeria as a country uh, appreciating its special circumstances, uh, especially in terms of uh, uh, economic sabotage, in terms of a security or state of insecurity, uh, they would approach definitely uh, the Benanua counterparts uh, and uh, agree, uh, make the, put them in the know. Those are the things I say when I said it came so sudden, they should put them in the know, they should be in the know that for this reason and for that reason, that there is the need to carry out this process for the purposes of achieving this governmental objective it is possible, it is the right thing to do. In that case, it will not affect any uh, ECOWAS protocol because it was a necessary action to take for that time and for that purpose. And once that is achieved, the border will be opened. But my point is this. I, I have seen successive Nigerian governments take actions that, in my own opinion, are not sustainable. They are, the, the impact they will only impact in terms of affecting the citizenry negatively, economically. Their impact cannot come uh, in terms of positive uh, and measurable impact that you can see. Some of the pos uh, positions that the government, policies that the government have come up with are policies that do not solve problems. Instead, they create more. It, I have seen it happen in the issue of uh, uh, the, the, the Burundi change uh, something, and suddenly they came up with another one that said you cannot withdraw money with your, with your Nigerian uh, uh, card overseas. They made away with that because they were so sudden. They were not well thought out. For example, there are policies that we are well thought out. The BVM policy, the TSA policy. And, and so, so some other policies of government that are sustainable. They have been running for years now, and they are sustainable. But when government, out of lack of presence of mind and concentration, I mean, creativity in governance, suddenly comes up with a policy to achieve a particular purpose that is not sustainable, then the people will, will, people will cry out because I don't see any achievement or any, any objective coming out of this. Why? This, different governments have, at different points in time, closed the border on one ground or the other. And after some time, most times not up to, up to a month or two, they open it up because the policy was not well thought out. My point is not, I'm not arguing against the concept of closing or using a Kines language, border management. That is necessary at different points in time in the life of a, of a nation. But to say that governments will suddenly come up with a policy that will affect the citizens negatively and such policy is not well thought out and suddenly implemented and people will cry out and government will rescind it. I have seen it happen recently. It happened in the case of, uh, what's that, uh, visa uh, reciprocacy, uh, this day. Yes, with the United States. Not well thought out. And the reason is, is this. The citizens fail to hold government accountable. That is why government can come up with a policy 
rescind the policy, initiate another one, do away with it, and our resources are going down the drain, and nobody holds them accountable and because we patronize them. So I think in this situation, we cannot applaud the government. They have done what they should do. But I mean, closing the border, completely closing the border, cutting out people from entering the country and people from going out of the country. It it's, is, it's a partial closure. It's not a complete closure. I don't think uh, it's a partial closure. But even if it is a partial closure, I tell you some of the reasons government have adduced are reasons that intelligence and proper border management can resolve. Okay, um, let's 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 move the conversation to Abuja, where we still have Jide Ojo. So, Jide, you had a line of thought um, before we lost signal a while ago. You were of the opinion that uh, you were uh, you were trying to establish the fact that um, uh, the Nigerian customs um, uh, uh, this falls on their table. Uh, you want to ask what have they been doing over time that um, it is uh, now in the in the eye of the storm, in the eye of the entire Nigerians that um, they have to start working. You were saying that. Uh, this whole policy indicts uh, the efficiency of the Nigerian customs. Could you just shed more light into that line of, um, of, of thoughts? Exactly, exactly uh, David. Um, it's an indictment on Nigerian customs. It's an indictment on uh, Nigerian immigration service. It's an indictment on all the other security agencies that are manning and managing our border posts. Like I said, if you partially close the border because of smuggling, and you are closing the um, well-manned border post. You are not talking of the 1,400 illegal entry points to Nigeria. Those are the areas that the smugglers will take their, their cargoes to. They usually will not come through uh, the, 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 the properly manned and manage the border, border post. And it takes two to tango. When these smuggled products are coming from Benin Republic, the gendarmes and the customs of Benin Republic, did they do anything to stop these illegal cargoes coming to Nigeria? When they get to Nigerian border positions, what do we do? We have worked on TV, listened on radio, read on the pages of newspapers, tons and tons of small good rice, small good poultry products, small good frozen food that have been impounded by the, by the, by the customs. So where, if, if you are still saying that in spite of all of this, then we are losing $400 million to illegal rice importation and thereby killing local initiatives. Then why is the government not looking at the regular and illegal border posts that are not manned? 1,400 of them. If they do man those ones, which are being used by these smugglers, then they will checkmate the illegal flow of all of this, whether it's livestock, whether it's frozen food, whether it's rice, whether it's even illegal uh, smuggled of uh, small arms and light weapons. These smugglers are not daft. They are not daft. They will not take what they have not, I mean, vehicles come in from Benin Republic virtually on a daily basis. If you pay your duties, you are free to import this. And when you now have a position that you are shutting the uh, properly manned and managed border post, and you are leaving now the 1,400 plus illegal entry routes, then you are playing the ostrich. You are looking at the solution in the wrong places. Because even if you shut down the, uh, the, the, the uh, semi border for the entire year, it doesn't stop smuggling. These people will go through their well known illegal entry routes and will, they will bring in this product. They will, they will take out our petroleum products to Cameroon, to Benin, and other neighboring countries. They will bring in rice, they will bring in frozen food through this illegal entry point. So for me, what the government needs to do is not to partially or fully close the well-manned border post. It is to make sure that if they need to introduce technology to man those border posts better so that you can do proper scanning of uh, articulated vehicles bringing in goods and products so that 
those who have genuine businesses are not negatively affected. And they can bring in their goods in as far as they are paid the uh, proper levies and du custom duties that are, they are supposed to pay on those products. And then the, the, we, we know that we are signed, we signed on to ECOWAS free movement of goods and, 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 and services and um, um, women. So this, this, is, this needs to be respected. We have also recently signed on to AFTA. Uh, African Free Trade Agreement, uh, African Free Trade, uh, African Continental Free Trade Agreement, the, which is uh, which is also more like an expansion of the ECOWAS Free uh, Movement of uh, Goods and Services. So, if if you now shut down your border, the genuine businessmen who are into importation of goods that are not banned, they are going to be negatively affected. And who goes to compensate them? Uh, uh, Alright, Jide. Who pays them? Jide, we're really out of time. We need to go one round each uh, with um, our guests across locations. All right. Uh, let's speak with Henry Ekine. Henry, your closing remarks. Uh, one of the effects of these border closures, as we've seen uh, for some time now, uh, we've seen the high cost of goods, uh, goods like um, rice, uh, spaghetti, groundnut oil, and um, the like. All these condiments we need to eat, you know, every day. Now. People have cried, people who do businesses have cried that some of their goods have perished uh, these borders because um, they are not allowed to bring it in. Uh, what would you suggest uh, the government can do to, uh, uh, to reduce this effect it's having on Nigerians? Uh, we apologize for that loss of audio. But let's, um, let's get your closing remarks, Philip, uh, concerning the same question. People are complaining, the, right, the price of rice has gone up, really. I, I'm even, I'm even, my heart goes out to people who even live on rice on a daily basis. Uh, the groundnut oil, even tomatoes, and some other things that we live on on a daily basis. Uh, um, first of all, I'm afraid that this price might not even come down, even if the government opens the borders. But tell me, are there ways the government can actually reduce this hardship Nigerians are facing. I, I will be suggesting two, uh, two measures to the government. Uh, with respect to uh, our borders, border management, I think Mr. President recently suggested introducing CCTVs and um, drones uh, to uh, man uh, for, for, to, uh, to addressing security in the country. I think they should pilot that concept along our border areas using uh, uh, technology, especially drones, uh, to man, especially those uh, over 1,400 uh, unmanned uh, entry, point, entry and exit points. So I, I will be urging the government to immediately uh, test run the use of drones, technology, and uh, CCTVs in that border, across our border areas. That is number one. Number two, uh, I think the government should uh, immediately begin to address uh, youth unemployment with respect to agriculture. I, I am not very comfortable with this political agricultural revolution thing that everybody is not feeling the impact. Uh, and our youths are available. Every country sees their youth as a, a, a key and fundamental resource. But uh, unfortunately for us in Nigeria, across our streets, from street to street, everywhere you go, young people loitering and littering everywhere, and they are not put to use. Uh, I think the government should start addressing hunger in the land, using these young people, not for political uh, agricultural show, but measurable and impactful uh, employment. And uh, we have the land from Lagos going to through Kogi, Benue, and so on, on your way to Abuja, vast area of land, wasting out. The human resources, wasting out. It's just the presence of mind, the creativity and the innovation to bring vast human resources, 60% of our population, young people, and vast landed, I mean, fertile lands, 
just jam these two together and there will be food security, not, not a, a political food security. I think the government will be doing us a great favor in that regard. Uh, all right, Philip, uh, I think it's a perfect um, place to end this conversation. Thank you so much. I'm Ambassador Philip Obwesi, a legal practitioner. I'm Henry Ikine in our Ponta Studio. Thank you for your intervention. And Gide Ojo, thank you so very much, gentlemen, for your intervention. Uh, we'll take a break now when we come back. Uh, our next line of conversation will continue. Don't go away. Get the news fresh and while it's hot. If you want breaking stories in Nigeria and across the world, we've got you covered. Join the news and brief at 12 p.m. and 4 p.m. every weekday, Monday to Friday, on Tiverbird Television.